solve a problem that's been on the Altrix community for just a little bit. And it's a problem that I've solved before uh, for other people. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this. It's going to have a little bit of extra length to it, but it's something that is uh, often asked about. It's about order of operations. What this Altrix post does is it shows that within the workflow, they're writing out data. And here they're writing out this Billings YXDB file. And they want to make sure that this file is written before this container starts reading all the billing data. It sounds reasonable. So I have a situation where I want to output a large file. The next step is to load several files using a wildcard character, including the one that I output, but I don't want it to start before it finishes writing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do just a little bit of prep work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a text input file so I can create some data. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'll have field one with the letter A, field two with the number one, field three, B, two, C, three. That's not a lot of data. I'm then going to use a generate rows here. And let's say that I want to make 100, 1, 2, 3, 100,000 rows of data. I'm going to go and do that. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to write that out. to a um, an output file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tile tool on here. And I'm going to use a uh, equal records. Actually, I yeah, I'm going to use the equal records. I'm going to create five tiles. Um, and then in this output, I'm going to write it out to my download directory, to my Altrix challenge, to directory of data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here, billings, data, space dot yxdb save and I'm going to take the file name from a field append and suffix I want to go and put the tile number on that I'll keep the field in output and hit run so now I've got some data in this Billings file. And why don't I now do this and I'm going to have this file with 100,000 records and um, I'm now going to add in another 100,000 records. And this file, I'm not going to take the name from a field, and I'm going to run. So now what I want you to see is that in my Altrix challenge in my directory of data, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and then this data that doesn't have any number on it, and it's much larger than the other files. I'm actually going to delete this now, but I want to show you that what they're trying to do is create this data and then be able to bring in a wildcard to be able to say, 
here's my input data. I want to come back to the directory of data. And I'm just going to make that billing data asterisk open. Oh, I'm billing data. You don't. Let me redo that. I'm going to take in one of these files, hit the open button. This is odd that it's doing this to me, but it's billing data to open. I can then change billing data to to billing data asterisk here and hit the browse. So what they want to make sure that they're doing, and I'm going to bring in uh, output the name and I'm going to put in the uh, file name only. And I'm going to put a summarize tool on here and I'm going to say, I want to know for each file name, add group by and add the count of records. So now they're doing the same type of operation. They're doing something up here. Then they want to read in all the data. Press run. And in this case, I got all the billings data to come in. That's not always the case it's going to happen because sometimes what's going to happen is I'm just copying this pasting it here, copying this here, pasting it here, and hit run. See, this ran first. And if I had deleted the data, you would have seen that. But if we take a look at the, um, the messages log, the first input data that was run was the 100,000 read. Here. So this actually happened first. We don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is, um, and I gave a hint to this already in the uh, post that I gave, I'm going to use these tools. I'm going to use a summarize, a pen fields, directory, and dynamic input. That's the answer. I'm going to summarize here at the same point that I'm writing this output data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a count of records. It doesn't matter which field I picked. And if I really want to make sure that this thing works correctly, uh, if you have a crew macro, you can use a parallel block until done. Um, but I'm going to use a block until done. And what I'm going to do, actually, let's put the block until done here. It will slow down the workflow just a little bit. I'm going to cause all the records to wait here. Then, once all of the data passes into this tool, I'm now adding the block until done. I'm then going to pass all the data in to be counted. Now, when I go to do that, this billings data star.yxdb issue still exists. But in the input output tool, there's a directory tool. And what I can do is come to the directory of data and I can look for all the billing data here, and I'm just going to copy this and move it over to a new workflow so you can see what it produces. When this runs, uh, directory of data, let's uh, put a browse on that. It's saying that I have no data there. So let's 
come back here, directory of data, okay. I did something odd, yxdb. It's showing that I have six files in there. Now what I'm gonna do, oh yeah, billings data, yeah. Um, let's uh, come back to directory of data, get rid of that billings data, come here, hit run, and now you see I have five files. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make that same file specification star.yxdb. And now, instead of using an input tool, I'm going to use this directory of data. And I'm going to use a tool. It's in the developer tools. It's a dynamic input tool. And the dynamic input tool has an input anchor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in a file and I'm going to read in a sample file, which is say billings data two, which I know exists there. So if you don't have data that you know exists there, you might want to create a sample file somewhere else. It's not going to bring in any of this data, but it's going to have all the field information in it. And output name as a field for this one, I'm going to say the file name only. And that's going to tell me that every time I read a file, I want to do this. So I'm doing it now. If you don't need it, don't do this. But for what I'm doing, I need to say what the file name is. Now, what I want to do is read in a list of data sources. Well, I have that in this full path data. When I ran this, I have a full path here, which says the C colon users, etc. directory of data, billings data. So that's what I want to read in. And that's my instruction that I want to read this in. And then I can go and I can do the same type of operation, group by field file name, give me a count. But, even this might start kicking off before this is done. So this is where the trick comes in. The whole trick you've been waiting for. It's called an append fields tool. So what I'm doing is I'm saying after I take this directory of data, I'm going to append the count. Now this never used the count. And in fact, I might even come in here to the source and uncheck the count. And now when I take a look at my directory of data, I have one, two, three, four, five. I don't have six files. I'm going to hit run. Unfortunately, my file was not found uh, because I have an action that was wrong. Change entire file path. Another fun point for me. Yes, I do not make all workflows run the first time. So I've deleted that fifth file. I'm hitting run. And here I can see that I had my six files coming through. Now, there is a chance of this going wrong. So after I've told you all of this and I tell you it's going to work, there is a chance that this is not going to run because there is a possibility that this directory isn't going to make it through this process. So 
I can now better this process. And what I can do is I could take this process here and I can put it into a batch macro. If I put this into a batch macro, the batch macro isn't going to run until the directory or whatever data is being put in here then feeds in to the dynamic read or the wildcard process. This is a workaround that I find works almost all the time. And so I'm recommending it to you to try it and see maybe if you can improve upon it and, and harden it and make it something that'll work for you all the time. So there is a chance that this won't work for you, but if you put this tool on last uh, to the process, it's quite, I'm gonna just copy this whole process, paste, come to my directory, get rid of that billings data, and hit run. It did run again. So this trick, which you'll find explained here, I'll add in the block until done into the comment, is what you'll be doing, and hopefully it solves your problem. Thank you very much for listening, watching, and uh, subscribing. Thank you very much.